What's going on, everyone? Alex Miller from the Eagle joined with Travis L. Brown. Day three of the SEC Media Days were today. And Jimbo Fisher, DeMarvin Leal, and Kenyon Green were the representatives from Texas A&M that took center stage at the Winfrey Hotel. You know, there's a lot of question marks about A&M's offensive line and the quarterbacks, but the big story of the day was really not even about A&M, but it kind of was because our friend Brent Zorneman from the Houston Chronicle reporting that Texas and Oklahoma have expressed interest to join the SEC. Travis, you've been there all day in the middle of it. You know, tell just kind of recap and – Give us a feel of what where everything is right now, because this kind of came out of left field, honestly. Sure, sure. I, I first want to start out with saying that everything I'm about to say is going to be magical and wonderful because my iPad is resting on Paul Feinbaum's radio desk. So, I mean, I, it's just going to flow from me right now. We're here at the Winfrey Hotel, of course, uh, in Hoover, Alabama, where they're having SEC Media Days and, and a little bit of the behind the scenes. And of course, great job by our buddy Brent Zorneman on his 14th wedding anniversary, no less, uh, breaking some big news. Where me and Robert Cessna sitting on the same row as him, and then all of a sudden he freaks out and grabs his laptop and just runs out of the ballroom. And of course, I'm thinking, well, maybe is he getting like a like a one on one with Jimbo Fisher? So I grab my stuff and I start trying to hunt him down. And I spend like an hour and a half trying to hunt Brent Zorneman down. And the next thing you know, on Twitter as the same time everyone else saw it, it exploded that there's this report um, that the, um, the, the, the SEC is, uh, or, or excuse me, Oklahoma and Texas are looking at, had, had put uh, uh, feelers out there to try to join the SEC according to a college football insider that talked to the Houston Chronicle and that an announcement, a potential announcement could be made within a, a couple of weeks of their joining. Now, there's, there's several parts to this that are interesting. Well, first, first, let's talk about the fact that Greg Sankey, I, I ran over and, and, and asked, we asked Greg Sankey on uh, what his comments on this, and he said he, he has no comments on this speculation. And we got to talk with a and Athletic Director Ross Bjork, who was here tra- with the traveling party from a and talking to, uh, uh, walking around the players. So real, real quick, if, you, if you'll allow me, Alex, here, I will play. Uh, let me share my screen. Um, I will play uh, Travis is going to play audio on yes, Ross thank you. comments on Texas and Oklahoma potentially joining uh, Are we hearing it now? College athletics is changing clearly it's changing right and so to me a lot of that sort of chum in the water is the changes in college athletics where people can speculate and do mm-hmm. certain things. And so, again, I haven't read the article, but that's if you're asking me to kind of comment about college yeah. athletics. Yeah. It's changing. So what does that look like? We don't know. But I know how we feel about the SEC and about being the only program in the state of Texas in the SEC. And that's that's all I can say right now. So, because I don't know anything else. And you had you no idea. What was your initial no reaction when your president? Okay. She was, she just heard about the article the same time I did, so she was calling to say, "Hey, have you seen this article?" No, I haven't seen it yet. And I was trying to pull it up as I was on the phone, so she didn't know that was it. She had not known the article popped. As we're all standing here. So. What what does that say about Texas and Oklahoma and the SEC that this could happen behind the scenes? I would ask. Texas and Oklahoma. Yeah. Yeah. So we, as athletic directors, we haven't talked about it. So I think it just goes to what I said to him about the future of college athletics. Like there's just a lot of things that are unknown right now, and I think this this type of you know environment fuels those kind of stories. So that's all I know. Like I said, we want to be the only SEC program in the state of Texas. There's a reason why Texas A&M left the Big 12, to be standalone, to have our own identity, and that's our feeling. Is there any language as such? I'm not aware aware of anything. I'm not aware of anything. All right. So that was... 
Yeah, go ahead, Travis. Yeah, that was Texas A&M Athletic Director Ross Bjork talking just a little bit about, and, and what he was mentioning there, um, what he was mentioning there was the fact that he was standing out here talking with some of us and had to take a phone call, ran off. It was actually uh, Catherine Banks, the new A&M president, who was calling him saying, have you seen this article? And that was kind of the first he said he, he heard about it. Um, so, of course, uh, minutes after this started dropping, Jimbo Fisher went on the main stage here at SEC Media Days. And down the line of things, he was asked about this. And, and then someone said, do you have any thoughts about Texas and OU wanting to come in the Big 12? And he said, of course they want to come in the Big 12 because, I mean, excuse me, the Big 12, the SEC, because, um, you know, this is, this is the, the most powerful conference in college football. And um, that being said, that's kind of the reaction that happened today. Most of the AM players didn't really buy it on so talking if they necessarily wanted to play these teams or, or, or not. Um, if you look in the SEC bylaws, what would have to happen is they'd have to be issued a formal invitation by the uh, chief executive officers of the SEC, which is the uh, SEC presidents and, and some athletic directors. And after that process, there would have to be a vote of three-fourths the membership in favor of bringing any new members in, which I talked to Ross Bjork, we believe is a, would be about 10 members voting yes. And Alex, I know we'll probably get into a little bit more pontificating on the merits or the possibilities of this happening, but it, it's been a wild day, a lot of running around. I, I've reached out to uh, Texas and OU Communications as well as Texas Athletic Director Crystal Conte and haven't heard back from them yet on anything like that. But um, we'll see. It, it made things very interesting today. Yeah, obviously Brent was the first one to break this news, but other people and journalists involved in college sports, you know, they've been reaching out to their sources. The collective feeling, it seems, among Brent's reporting, others reporting, is that this has kind of been in the works behind the shadows for a while. Um, and obviously there's a lot of television contracts that are going to be coming up here in the next couple of years. Um, so maybe it's not necessarily surprising that a giant like Texas and a, a, a blue blood like Oklahoma are already trying to get ahead of things and see what kind of possibilities there could be. And like you said, what better conference to be in than the SEC. But as we know, this is not going to be an easy process if, in fact, Texas and Oklahoma do end up becoming members of this SEC. And there were some rumblings about this from the Oklahoma perspective uh, at Big 12 Media Days last week, talking about some of these kinds of issues about Oklahoma maybe wanting to find a new home. And uh, Texas, of course, kind of added on to the, uh, the, the storyline today. There's a lot of hurdles, though, because first off, let's talk about the fact that well, the Texas is still under contract with the Longhorn Network through, I believe it's 2030, but 2031. we can definitely looked at 2031. Um, and of course, the SCC has with the SEC Network, if Texas were to come over, uh, there, 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 there would be an issue there. How do they negotiate? It is the same company. It's both ESTN, um, but there, there's money to be had there. And how is that going to necessarily work out? Because the SEC network, I mean, excuse me, the Longhorn network to a lot of people is what maybe forced AM and Missouri to want to, to, to run over to the, the SEC or at least leave the Big 12 for the greener pastures of the SEC. And so I bet you most people would want that to coexist with the SEC network. Then you look at in Oklahoma, there's always been the, the, the talk and, and even from some of the legal standpoint of the fact that Oklahoma wants Oklahoma and Oklahoma State together in the same conference. And uh, what would what that situation would bring in in the Oklahoma side of these things. And then you look and, and you kind of try to look across how this would work out. And would there be 10 teams that would vote yes to this in the SEC? Because you got to think that AM, Missouri, Arkansas are no's. Um, because they the whole reason they escaped was to get away from Texas and, and their um, issues that they had. And then you have um, the possibility that Arkansas, or excuse me, Alabama and Auburn would go over to the East. So schools like Tennessee, Florida, Georgia, they wouldn't want to have to play Alabama every year. And you're already above the four team uh, no threshold that they would have to have to get a positive vote. And so uh, yes, there's politics. Yes. There's people that say, and, and administrations that say, hey, do this to scratch our butt back and we'll scratch your back and things like that can happen. But even just at the three-fourths vote, I see it as a non-starter right now. 
And there, there is talks too of, it's not in any of the SEC bylaws. But there's kind of always been this gentleman's agreement that's been reported frequently about if there is a school already in the SEC membership in a state that they have to get clearance from that school to add another school in that state. And that goes back to the talks when they thought Florida State might leave the ACC for the SEC in about 2012 um, and talking that they kind of had this rumors of this general's agreement that Florida would have to agree to let Florida State in uh, for the SEC to do that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, just looking at the logistics of it, I mean, one, it's not surprising that this is a thing, but it seems like a long shot when you consider things on both sides of the equation. Um, but obviously there's, there's smoke and where there's smoke, there's usually a fire. So where there's smoke, there's usually Brent Zorneman. I, yeah. That- you know, I saw, I saw a Photoshop of Brent Zorneman on Twitter today uh, from some fine folks at good bull hunting. I won't say what it was because I don't think it's appropriate, but is it wasn't I, it the Kim Kardashian picture? I mean, I wasn't gonna say it, but you can. Yeah, it's the it's the <laughs> uh, the Kim Kardashian uh, picture. It's it's tactfully edited for the most part. Right. It's, it's tactfully edited, but it has his face on it uh, and says Brent Zorneman breaking the internet. And he definitely broke SEC media day there for a couple hours with people just running around like crazy people trying to track people down to get some answers. Well, this is definitely a story that we'll be following in the days and the weeks to come. Travis, let's kind of shift gears though, and actually discuss some ball maybe and what A&M, Jimbo Fisher, DeMarvin and Kenyon came to speak on today. You know, what were some of the main storylines you heard from those three? Well, you know, and even the other thing that broke kind of today that had some uh, effect with Jimbo Fisher is the fact that there was reports that uh, former Florida State head coach Bobby Bowden has been diagnosed with a terminal illness. And so, of course, I mean, Jimbo Fisher always says that people joke that he was just another member of the Bowden family with how much time he spent there working with the coaches and staying at their house and things like that. And so he had some kind words and said, uh, asked for everyone there to pray for um, the the Bowden family. And Bobby Bowden also brought up uh, R.C. Slocum, who's going through his own uh, battles with cancer right now and that kind of started off his his talk um also wish chris middleton a congratulations for winning an nba title last night and uh congratulated and well wished the uh, aggie olympians that are heading over to tokyo so that was a major part of that um you know it was it's kind of funny because there wasn't a whole lot of questions especially to the a m players because they were the last team of the day today and um there, everyone was so frantically trying to chase down this OU um, Texas story um, today. And so, you know, um, a lot of talk about how both quarterbacks have uh, really impressed and they don't really know. And, and, and a lot of talk about how important guys like Isaiah Spiller, Jaden Weidem- Jalen Weidemeyer, Devonna Chain, even some of the wideouts are going to be to those young quarterbacks as security blankets uh, moving forward, some good conversation with Kenyon Green about the offensive line and some of the guys that are going to step up and, and how he feels like they will be able to be successful this year despite losing um, four starters. So a lot of that normal kind of talk, something that I know came out at the uh, coaches uh, school on Sunday that was asked a lot about again is Caleb Chapman and his health. He's 100% after suffering that, that knee injury last year in the, uh, the, uh, towards the end of the Florida game. Uh, and that Jimbo, that was another guy that Jimbo Fisher actually called out by name several times when talking about real good security blankets for these young quarterbacks is Caleb Chapman and how uh, well he came on and, and the expectations that they had uh, for him moving forward. Um, yeah, so that, that, that was most of the talk from the A&M stuff. I know, I, I will be honest, both me and Robert Sesta, Robert Sesta less, but I know me, I was focused on turning that story around. So I wasn't able to listen as intently as I would like, but if you check the Eagle.com uh, tonight, pick up your copy of the Eagle tomorrow, we will have reviewed the tape. We'll have some great content for what the AM player said and what was going on here at media days beyond just that breaking story of Texas and OU. Well, and it seemed as if there one big question that Jimbo kept getting asked about was kind of in reference to his comments about Nick Saban in Alabama at the Houston Touchdown Club a few weeks ago and mm-hmm. just, you know, trying to catch and beat Alabama. And, you know, 
whether or not some people took those comments a little out of context or not, I think the fact still stands. Jimbo knows A&M's chasing Alabama, and Alabama is the gold standard. He has the utmost respect for Nick Saban, but he made it clear, you know, his goal is to beat him because right now that is what everybody's aiming for. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And uh, I mean, you know, there is the questions every year at SECBD Day of who's going to be the team that steps up and actually is able to knock off Alabama. And I think it does hold a little bit more water this year because A&M actually does have a, a chance and has a, has a comp in the conversation as a team that might be able to um, pull that off, especially um, with the kind of defense that returns, it really falls on the offensive line and the quarterbacks as we've talked um, plenty of times before, but um, yeah, uh, it, it, that, that was probably one of the other big overarching uh, themes. A couple of other uh, just quick hitters too, that we'll have a notes. It was interesting. Uh, Clark Lee, the new Vanderbilt head coach, actually was a strong um, mentee to uh, uh, Texas A&M defensive coordinator Mike Elko at Bowling Green. And then he followed him to uh, Wake Forest and then followed him to Notre Dame and actually took over as defensive coordinator at Notre Dame after um, Mike Elko left for the Texas A&M job and had some great things to say about Mike Elko and said that some of the things he learned from Mike Elko will be a part of his coaching style um, forever. Um, and so there'll be a lot of that uh, in with the, with Vanderbilt. Nick Saban had some great things to say about Jimbo and said that they're a team, of course, that they're going to look ahead and, and, and respect uh, this year. And uh, probably the, the funniest moment of the day was uh, someone asked uh, Mike Leach about if he was ever in the running for the Tennessee job in years past plays at Washington State. And he called the Tennessee coaching uh, search a, a coup de tête uh, and said he was not invited to the coup de tête uh, at that time. So, well, and how about how about A and M's own Jimbo Fisher? Let me pull up the quote talking about uh, name, image, likeness. And you tweeted it, Travis, saying Jimbo saying, "Heck, some people have been doing name, image, likeness for a long time, and they just haven't been telling anybody." <laughs> yeah, exactly. That, that was a good a, one. That got a really good. That got a really good reaction uh, from some folks in the in the crowd. I, I I could tell that that was a that was a hit. Yeah, for sure. Let me, uh, I, I'm trying something here. We're going to produce on the fly again. Uh, we got a little bit of video uh, from the uh, uh, Texas A&M players after it. And so let's, uh, let's hear a little bit from Jimbo Fisher um, as we close out this, uh, this podcast, if I can get this one to work. Uh, so let's pull up, uh, let's pull up, that's photos. Uh, let's see. Again, so Alex, uh, what uh, any other thoughts or? Um, um, keys yeah, you know, today? you know, definitely Nick Saban. I mean, his presence at SEC Media Days is obviously really big. Um, you know, he was early in the morning, um, had a lot of things to say, uh, and then Mike Leach. How about Mike Leach? He went straight to questions about what was it like, third, twelve, thirteen seconds in. I mean, it was. It was very fast, um, so that might have been <laughs> the first bus driver. All right, all Jimbo Fisher. Fisher. You guys, Saturdays may be a little bit more normal in the fall, and you're not playing in front of the I mean, I mean, it's just awesome to be able to get back to practice, but get the fans there, the people, the interaction, and go into Kyle Field with 105,000 people or 110 with Crab in there. You put 105 in there last year. We were supposed to have a quarter. Is that what they said? <laughs> they were, Dan's what Dan said. But have that atmosphere, that environment to go back through there, man. It's just I can't wait to feel it again. They'll, they'll set that timetable. I mean, just, we'll just play it by ear. I, I've learned not to force those things. you got to let them play. It. it could be quick. could be short. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. How special is it for a young guy to have a guy like Isaiah and a guy like Jalen to be good safety nets? Oh, yeah. you got Isaiah. you got him. you got a chain back there. you got the three receivers. you got mm -hmm. Anias in the slots. you got Chase. you got his. And then you get Chapman back. Mm -hmm. you get Hobie Demas ahead. you got JP, Devin. Moose, who I think, I mean, I, that's the thing about, don't worry me, you get all your skill guys, because they're going to be, and that's going to let a quarterback's development happen a lot quicker, because having all that experience. Does that change your play calling with the young quarterback that you learned over the years? Do you change anything when you change call a game? I thought that, and then James Winston won a Heisman, so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, you know, you got to play it by ear, and DeAndre Francois had a phenomenal year, won the Orange Bowl that year, and he threw. Oh, no.
Well, I think Travis needs a phone charger. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, uh, we, we, we lost it there, so that's okay. But uh, uh, anyway, we um, – Alex, close us out. Yeah, you know, I think the I think the point being from that is that AM obviously is still trying to search for their starting quarterback, but I guess the good news for the Aggies is they've got a ton of key pieces at the skill positions that hopefully, uh, if you're AM, will help speed things along in the development of either Haynes King or Zach Calzada, whoever ends up winning that job. Um, so, yeah, um, man. It's been a long day, Travis, and uh, I'm, I'm sure it's been even longer for you. <laughs> yeah, I'm really ready to sleep. But before we sleep, we're going to produce some great content, some great stories from today. We already have some great stuff up right now uh, from today. And so be sure to check theeagle.com, pick up a, pa- a, a paper tomorrow from the Eagle, myagnation.com uh, for stories and videos. Uh, that's all we got. Thanks, Alex. All right. Well, for Travis Brown, I'm Alex Miller. Be sure to check the U.com. We'll see you soon. Bye.